Welcome to the introduction to Yin. Um, I'm Nicola. For those that haven't met me before, uh, tonight, tonight we're going to focus more on the hips, um, on the hip joint, and trying to loosen into our hips and hoping finding a little bit more flexibility. Um, often in our hips, we store often store quite a lot of emotions. So when we um, in some of the poses, don't be surprised if sometimes some emotions come up for you that are unexpected. Just accept whatever comes and um, just go with it. Um, so we're going to start first with a pranayama, which is a brief breath exercise. And we're going to start with an Adi Shadana, which is alternate nostril breathing. Um, and this basically helps to balance our yin and our yang, our, our left and our right side. Um, it's a very simple practice, but it's also really nice to calm. So we basically, I'm just going to take my glasses off to show you, is we use our thumb to close off the right nostril. Place the two middle fingers up between your eyebrows, centre known as your third eye. And you use your ring finger to close off your left finger, the left nostril, sorry. So it's nice to close your eyes here really and to come and try and focus within around that third eye centre between your eyebrow space. And when you're ready, close off your right nostril and then gently take a nice slow breath through your left nostril. And when you come to the top of that breath, close off your left nostril and exhale through your right. Pause when you get to the top, bottom of the exhale and then inhale again through your right nostril. Pause at the top of your breath, close your right nostril, open your left nostril and exhale through the left. Pause at the bottom of the exhale and when you're ready to inhale, inhale again through the left nostril. Pause at the top, close off your left nostril, open your right and exhale through your right. Inhale through your right. Close your right nostril, open your left and exhale through the left nostril. And then just continue a few more rounds on your own because everybody's breath length is different. But try and make the inhale and the exhale at the same length. And just enjoy that pause at the top of the breath and at the end of the exhale. And just really focus on how the breath feels as it's entering your nostrils and how it feels when the breath's leaving your body. And throughout the day, we generally breathe through one nostril stronger than the other. And this is just a way, and there's no, nothing wrong with that, that's just normal. But it's just a way of bringing equilibrium and balance into our breath. And after your next exhale, through your left nostril, release your hands, keep your eyes closed, return to a normal breath and just notice how you feel. Just notice if your nostrils feel clear and how the air feels coming through your nose. And that lovely sense of release as the breath leaves your body, getting rid of anything we don't need. And then gently flutter with your eyes open. So Nadi Shadana is a very nice, easy practice to do if ever you're feeling a little bit tense. And it just brings balance back, obviously, into our airways, but also for our mind. And it's a very easy way and it only takes a few moments to find that stillness and that calm that we sometimes need when we're leading a, a busy life or something's not quite going right. 
So we're going to start sitting and we're going to come into long-legged butterfly. So for those that feel that their hips are tilting back, I suggest you sit on a cushion. And I forgot to say we need a blanket and um, a pillow if you've got one for tonight. So if you want to sit on the pillow so that you now feel that your hips are pushing forward rather than rotating back. I'm going to come off because I don't like it. But again, we're trying to use the props to help us in whatever, um, help us in the pose, whatever our body needs. So we're making a nice diamond shape with our, with our legs. I'll just come this way so you can see that. So we're not having our feet close into our groin. We're just having it at a very easy distance. So you're getting a slight tension in your inner thighs, but hopefully also feeling a little bit of tension in your hips. And then sit up nice and tall. And then gently just relax over your legs and into a forward fold. Now, if you can't come very far, you can use your pillow if you want, just to rest on. You can have your pillow further down for your head to rest on. And just know that use any props that you need to make this pose easier. So I'm just starting my timer. So we're going to be in here in this pose for about two minutes. I just want to introduce um, the concept of meridians. We um, talk a lot about meridians in, in yin yoga because we're um, often compressing the meridian lines. And the essential essence within yoga, the energy, is known as chi. So each meridian line is linked to an essential organ and the organs all come in pairs so like the kidney and the ur urinary bladder meridians work together um, the heart and the small intestine the spleen and the stomach um, the liver and the gallbladder and in this pose, because of where the meridian lines run, which run around the outside of your leg and the inside of your leg, um, in this one we're compressing the gallbladder and the urinary bladder meridians. Now each meridian is believed to be linked to a physical and energetic quality in your life. So if there's an imbalance, well then it will affect you in a certain way. So this one with the gallbladder, if the gallbladder is, is imbalanced, we usually have an ability to follow our own path in life, not being influenced by external uh, pressure and just being sure of ourselves. Well, if it's imbalanced, We'll be a bit unsure of ourselves and maybe timid or hesitant. And also physically, we can have signs of headaches, blurred vision and difficult pains in the, pains in the body. So that's your gallbladder in a nutshell. And when you're ready, just take a gentle breath in. And imagine you're breathing all the way down your spine, down into your pelvis. And then gently exhale. And then slowly, as in all yin postures, come out really, really slowly. And then gently gather your knees together. And then if you want to take any movement now, take any movement. Or just come down, lying down, into what we call our rebound. So this is the time where you just sit with whatever's going on in your body. It's a time to observe our chi, our energy, and to try and sense the energetic qualities within us. But don't worry if you can't sense anything. Just enjoy the stillness of lying on your back. be here for about a minute. And 
children from here are going to come into our next pose. So you can stay on your back and we're going to come into half happy baby. So I would suggest you bring your right foot up just so that we're doing the, the same foot. And maybe bend your left knee to begin with so the foot's flat on the floor. And then have your hands around the little toe side and your elbow if possible on the inside of your leg. And gently bring that knee down towards the floor. Again, we're all going to have different flexibilities. If it's really hard for you to reach your toes, just hang on to your ankle. And I often like to hang on to my ankle because I'm not trying to push and pull. If you remember for those that were here last week, we're trying to relax our muscles here. So in yin, we try and come into the pose and we find our edge. So make the shape, and here we're obviously targeting our hip and our uh, adductor muscle. So come to the pose and come to the deepest form you can find, and then if anything, just back away a little bit, because we're going to stay here for two minutes. Obviously, in a, long, in a longer class, we'd, we'd probably stay here three to five minutes. And then just see if you can just let the leg relax, which is quite tricky when you can feel that strong compression in your hip. Just struggling to find the relaxation here. And I invite you to close your eyes and then just return to a nice slow breath. And just observe the breath through your nostrils. See if you've got that still, that nice clear channel that you've created. Enjoy the ebb and the flow. And the breath really helps us in these poses. And if you feel you want a deeper stretch, you can extend your left leg along the floor, but only if that's right for you. Sometimes you, when you're in the pose, you do want to go a little bit deeper, or you might want to back off. For those that want to go a little bit deeper, and you're hanging on to your ankle, ankle, you can come back to your foot. Or you can try bringing your knee down a little bit further. But remember, we're trying to relax here. So it's, even though we're pulling and on with our arms, we should, we're not... Should, we should, sorry, we shouldn't be pulling, we're just holding our foot here. So our shoulder should be relaxed here. Sometimes you can use a strap if it's easier. Just notice that compression and what it feels like in this right hip. And just pay attention right now to that sensation in your hip. And just make a mental note so that when we come to our left side, you can try and be aware of any differences from the left to the right side. And then when you're ready, gently release that knee, maybe bend it into your chest. And then slowly place it onto the floor and just feel that sense of release in that right hip. Although we haven't been going for very long, we've still been compressing that inner thigh, joint area. And sometimes it's nice to maybe gently rub the area if you feel that you need to. Just noticing how the energy is moving. Or maybe it feels warm here. Or maybe it just feels achy. Often yin, um, poses can make us feel very achy after the pose, so don't be surprised if that happens. So when you're ready, slightly draw, bring the clock nearer, bring your left knee into your chest, and then hold either around the ankle or the outside, and come to happy baby on the left side. And just settle into the pose. So find a place where you feel that you can stay still, even though you're finding that deep compression in your hip. Or 
again, just imagine that your whole body is softening and sinking into the mat. You'd rather have your right knee stretched, um, flat the foot flat on the floor you can, or you can have it stretched. Again, play with what's right for you. And as I said last week, there's no perfect pose in yin. It's finding the stretch that works for you. As long as you're finding a compression right now into that right, uh, left even hip joint, well then you're doing the pose. And then just try to resolve to be still while we're compressing deep into this hip joint. And then spend these next few moments comparing the left to the right side. Notice if you've got any different sensations in this left hip. Or maybe the compression feels exactly the same. And as this pose we're activating the urinary bladder again and the kidneys. And we used the kidney and the urinary bladder meridians a lot last week with our spinal poses. And the kidney and urinary bladder are related to the emotion of fear. So if it's out of balance, we can you know, be quite fearful. And we know there's a lot of fear going around at the moment. So trying to activate and compress these meridians, we're doing like acupressure at the moment. We're trying to um, get the chi, the harmony of the balance of the chi again, so that it's flowing freely. And you can see, hopefully, not feel anxious. So when you're ready, gently just bring that knee into your chest. And then slowly place each foot by the side of each other. Bring your palms facing upwards as we just come into our rebound. And just feel any sensations that's going on around your hip area. We've been compressing quite deeply here. So there's going to be movement of some sort just from your blood freely flowing. Also, your feet have been inverted, your legs have been inverted. So there'll be a rush of the blood going back into the limbs. So just enjoy those sense. Observe your own body. So slowly roll onto your side, whichever side's good for you, and then come up to sitting. And we're going to come to half shoelace. So half shoelace, I'm going to face you this way so you can see. Did you have, have your right leg out in front of you, and then just cross, if possible, your left knee over and let your left knee try and be in line with the right knee. If anybody wants to come into full shoelace, full shoelace is where you stack both knees on top of each other. But as this is an introduction to yin, I thought we'd do the half shoelace. And you're still getting activating your hamstrings and your hip here. So come and find that comfortable position. If you Feeling really uncomfortable again, you can use a, a cushion or a blanket to sit on because we're going to fold forward. If anybody finds this really uncomfortable under their knee, you could place, uh, place a blanket to make it more comfortable. But try and have that bottom foot pointing upwards, but relaxed. You don't want it flopping to the side, you want your foot upright so that you're activating the back of your hamstring and your right leg. And then when you're ready, just gently curve and fold forward. And again, it doesn't matter how far you come forward. 
as long as you're feeling that gentle tug somewhere in your spine and you may be feeling it in your outer left hip you may be feeling a stretch in your right hamstring but we're all going to feel different things our main target area here tonight is the hips but as I've said, all our bodies are completely different, so we will feel things in different places. So there's no right and wrong. And then just return to that breath again. Notice how you're breathing through your nostrils. See if you've still got a balance between your left and your right. If you haven't, that doesn't matter. It's just an observation. And then when you inhale next time, imagine that you're following the breath and you're sending it all the way to, the, to your back, along your spine, down to that right and left hip. So wherever you're feeling the deepest part of the compression. And imagine as you exhale, you're softening, you're relaxing, your whole body is melting and releasing. So when you're ready, we're just going to gently come up, so just inhale, and as you exhale, gently, slowly, slowly does it, walk back up, and then release your top leg. And we're not going to lie down this time, we're just going to just sense for a few moments any difference between the left and the right, there might be none, but that's fine. Any feelings in the toes, if the toes are raised. And then we're going to cross our right knee over our left. Again, try and have the left toes flexed but relaxed, but you're slightly internally rotating that inner thigh. But if that's really too difficult, you can just let it drop. And then just check that you're trying to get the knees lined up. If that's again, if it's too much, just come to where you're feeling. As long as you're getting a stretch in these outer hips, then that's good enough. And again, if anybody wants to come to the full shoelace, then you can. Both knees on top of each other, you can. So come to whichever position you did last time. And then fold forward and gently just release. So we're also working into the iliotibial band here, which is that long muscle that goes from our iliac crest down all the way down our tibia. And we can often get lots of pain there. And as we age, we lose moisture in our tissues and joints, unfortunately. And particularly in um, the synovial fluid in the joint capsule. And that's one of the reasons why we get a little bit stiff sometimes in the morning um, because of this loss of moisture. But by doing the in poses, we're compressing the joint and we're trying to encourage the moisture to re-flood the joints. It's not as easy as that, of course, but we're trying to um, stress the joint capsule, which will then send messages to the brain that we need to do something about it. So it sends fibroblasts, if we do yin often enough, which are like bone building blocks to help, which will help prevent in osteoarthritis um, or porosis. So 
kind of see if you notice any difference on this side to the other side. Just enjoying this nice long stretch. And then gently, we're going to walk ourselves slowly back up with an exhale. And then I invite you to lie down into your rebound. And just notice how your hips are feeling right now. And just enjoy this stillness and this time to notice your chi, your energy, your essential life force and how it's moving through your body. side and gently come up and now we're going to come to squat which may be really easy for some people and impossible for others so basically we squat we have our feet at a diagonal on our knees going in the same way and if possible you lift your bottom off the floor and you can bring your hands in the center or you can have them on the floor if that's not accessible to you at all, then get your pillow. I'm going to come onto the side so you can see what I'm doing. And sit on the pillow. Have your feet out wide. And that, but then try and, try and activate the um, adductors in your, um, in your inner thigh muscles. And then we're just going to hang out here. So I'm going to come back into the squat pose. I'm just going to put my clock on so that we don't go over time. It's a long time to be in here. You don't have to have your hands in prayer. I just find that it's easy for me. If you'd rather just have your hand gently resting on the floor, you can. Again, as long as we're finding that extension in our hips and um, feeling, feeling that um, uh, in, our, in, our, in our inner thigh, get my words out, well then we're doing the pose. And here we're activating the liver, the kidney and the urinary bladder meridian. And the liver chi is uh, is seen by traditional Chinese medicine as the general of the army and the Taoists believe it is the key to our overall well-being if our liver chi is in balance. And if it's unbalanced then we can often have irregular emotions, feel out of sorts, be angry, frustrated, defensive. And physically, we can have lower back problems, abdominal pain, we can get arthritis, cramping, muscular weakness, fatigue, vertigo, there's a lot that the liver chi is responsible for. So it's a really good one to try and keep in balance. But when you look at all of the energetic pro properties of our um, meridians, it's very difficult to choose the one which we, is most important to us. So if you've managed to stay in the squat for this long, well done you. If you've been sitting on a cushion, that's, that's great too. So just gently come down onto your bottom or take the cushion away. And then slowly just come down onto your back. And maybe you'd like to have a little sway of your hips, if that feels good. Because there's been a lot of compression from a gravity from our upper body in that squat pose. So 
and then just come extend your legs out. Again, if your hips are feeling a bit achy because we're doing an awful lot of work here, you can just gently work around the hips. It's just nice to give yourself a gentle self-massage sometimes. And then if you're rubbing your hips, just release your hands and take a slow breath in. Bring your attention down to your hip area. Be aware of anything that's arising. And then gently release your breath. Everyone's going to come to um, wide or child's pose. So, have your, uh, your knees, if you can, hip uh, mat width apart and to little toes together, big toes together even. If that's really uncomfortable, you can have them out. And then just sink your bottom and then bring your hand, your, head, your forehead to the floor and your hands out in front of you. And this is wide leg child's pose. So it's a lovely, gentle um, stretch of your spine and into your hips. So this is also known as tadpoles. So we're going to be doing just doing this for about a minute because tadpole leads to frog. But some of you may want to stay in this tadpole position. So know that you can, if there's any poses you'd rather stay in when you're in a uni class, then you stay in them. Because it's your body and you, it's for you to discover which pose is better for you. Because in reality, we can stay in these poses for up to 20 minutes to get the full benefit. If there's one that's you know you feel you're really enjoying, then do. I mean, I when I I've, I've done squat before and I've wanted not wanted to come out, even though it's quite a strong pose. You sort of get in the zone when you've been after a certain amount of time. So just be aware that you can do that. going to come into frog. So if you know that child's pose, tadpole, rubs deep enough for you for your hips, well then stay there. I would suggest if you're going to come into frog, if you've got your blanket, use the blanket for your knees. Or if you haven't, you can roll up your mat. Just to have nice padding for your knees. And then bring your knees as wide part as you can that you know you're going to be comfortable with. If you know that's too strong, then just come away from your edge a little bit. And then I'm going to come sideways so you can see me better. And then try and keep your legs out away from each other, your feet. And try and keep your hips over your knees and then come down into the full frog position. Now, if that's too much, you can get your bolster here and lie on your bolster or your pillow, whatever you've got. Or if you just think that's too much anyway, just come back into wide leg child's pose or your cat pose. And you can play with your hip position here. To cancel my timer. So, so you, can, you just play a little bit, see whether you want to rock forward or back and find the right amount of compression in your hips that you know that you can hold for two minutes. And so we're trying to find the Goldilocks position in all yin poses. So not too much and not too little. So we need to be activating the joint. It needs to be a little bit uncomfortable for us to be getting any benefit from this um, yin practice. 
So the props are just here to try and make it a little bit more comfortable. So most of the poses that we've done so far have been fairly accessible, I think. Um, but if they're not, well then we do need to use more props. And unfortunately I can't see you, so I can't help you. So if you think you need another cushion here, you can have another cushion. If you want more padding on your knees, have more padding. It's a journey of self-discovery as well as to what our, how our body's reacting. And then for this last 45 seconds, I invite you to close your eyes if you haven't already. And notice the flow of your breath. Is your breath steady and calm? And just follow the flow of your breath. And then when you're ready, slowly, slowly bring your hands underneath your shoulders and push yourself up. Bring the knees together. Remove any props that you've had. And then come onto your back. Maybe just gently windscreen wiper your legs from side to side. Maybe bring your feet closer and just uh, hollow your back out and do a little pelvic tilt. Whatever you feel you need. And then we're going to and into our last pose, which is a kind butterfly. So just bring the soles of your feet together. And again, you can play with the position. You can have your feet a bit further away from you or closer together. And if you want to use a prop from beneath your knees, you can put a, a pillow or a blanket, whatever you feel you need. And sometimes it's really nice if you've got a, I've got a really heavy bean bag. That you, you probably haven't got one, but I'll tell you for future. It's nice to place a heavy bean bag on your tummy. Just to get that compression. And then just turn the tension of where your soles of your feet are meeting. And just, it always feels so nice, I think, having the two soles meeting, joining. And I like to rub my soles together a little bit, but that's just a, a personal preference, an invitation if you want to. And then take a nice slow breath in. Feel your tummy expand which is really lovely when you've got a weight on your tummy. And then exhale, and feel like your whole body just sinking into this mat. Let your knees go, let your shoulders go. Notice if you're holding any tension in your face. Let your jaw relax. Let the whole of your face relax. Feel the back of your head gently pressing into the floor. Feel your shoulders and shoulder blades being supported by the floor. And travel down with your imagination, imaginary line down to the palms of your hands. Feel a circular ball of warmth in the palm of your hand. 
Notice that gentle heat. And then this time as you exhale, follow your breath all the way down to your pelvic floor. And notice how your pelvis is feeling. And find the softness and the relief in that inner thigh area. Inhale as you exhale. Let the breath travel along your inner thighs to your knees, down to the soles of your feet. And just breathe in through your nose and watch the breath as it's flowing all the way down your body, your pelvis your inner thighs, your knees, down to the soles of your feet. And then this time we're going to inhale, imagine the breath coming up through the soles of our feet, up our knees, to our pelvis, up through our body. And then inhale and just keep doing the breath, following the breath. Letting the breath get fill the whole of your body. And just feel that nice, gentle ebb and flow of your breath. And then when you're ready, just slowly bring your knees together. Release both feet onto the floor. Maybe have a gentle rock from side to side if that feels good on the hips. And then inhale your arms up above your head and come into a full body stretch with that inhale. Point your toes, point your fingers and exhale. Just melt and relax, let the whole of your body just sink into that mat. Inhale one more time, pointing through your fingers and your toes. And exhale, release. One more time, inhale. Nice big stretch, the last one. And exhale, release. And then slowly roll over onto your left side, onto your yin side. And just pause here a moment. And gently push yourself back up to sitting. And just notice how you're feeling. Just return to your closing your eyes and feeling the flow through your nose. Just see if there's still balance there. And gently open your eyes. So thank you for practicing yin yoga with me tonight. Um, I hope your hips are not too achy. Um, and I hope tomorrow, if they are feeling achy, that they'll feel much better. And then they have a little bit more flexibility. So thank you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye.